So, as y'all can see by the video, it's my last day in Martin. I decided to uh, quit, actually. Um, not trying to discourage anybody that's already, you know, made their appearance at Martin or go to orientation and stuff like that. Um, Martin was just doing a lot of BS lately. Like, real BS. Like, other drivers complaining about it. And, uh, if you have a family, a kid, um, you gotta look after your best interests. That's all you gotta do. Um, I only called off one time, or twice, because I was sick, uh, last month. And I wasn't getting my consistent loads at all. And we have this new manager here. His name's Joe. I think the terminal manager's name is Nick. I'm not quite sure. But those guys like to play with your money a lot. And they don't care about anything. And I've been trying to run hard. Like, he ran me hard for the first two months when he started working here. He got here in January. I was running hard five months five days a week, no off days, and that was unheard of because we usually get home around two, three nights a week. That was not the case. He ran us like, I was getting like 2,500, almost 3,000 miles a week just from running back and forth, back and forth. And my paychecks weren't increasing. They just stayed the same. I was like, what's going on with the uh, guaranteed pay? And he tried his hardest. I don't know if he came from Swift or another mega carrier, but he knew what he was doing, but he was, he just didn't give a care. And going on about that, it made it real hard to get guaranteed pay, like almost impossible. So these last six months I've gotten guaranteed pay four times my, since he took over my salary went down $10,000 I'm $10,000 shorter from what, where I was last year and some people were like oh it's inflation and all this other stuff I was like we have contracts with two of the biggest companies Fortune 500 companies in the world. Coca-Cola and Walmart. There's no way they can't move freight. And they're on a dedicated account, so you're, you're guaranteed to get loads. You're like on the top of the pedestal before all these other smaller companies. So I'm sitting there wondering, I'm like, I'm sent home on a Monday figuring out like is he gonna dispatch I'm sitting in, I'm sitting here in the truck just filling on my phone and then he gives me a load but it ain't for tomorrow so I'm sitting there thinking I'm like why, why is he doing that like why is he giving me loads for the next day and in orientation it said leave your house by 730 or whatever I'm in the truck by 645 like every day and this is it got to the point where I just couldn't take it like me and him butt heads like I don't usually act out of character but he made me act out of character a lot like I, I was on the verge of cussing him out because last week last week was I don't know what was going on. Last week I had uh, I called in for two days of uh, vacation, and I got that, and then I worked a whole week, like 
I didn't miss it a day in that uh, Thursday through Wednesday stretch. I don't know why they have their pay period set up like that, but that's the way it is. I was running those days, mind you, and the last two and a half weeks, three weeks, Coca-Cola's uh, freight brokerage uh, website went down, so it was it was a pain in the butt to get loaded because their system went down so they had to do everything by hand so you had to get loaded and get hand picked for loads it was it was ridiculous and he, he said he's like since Wright City's uh, systems are down we're going to grant people that work today guarantee pay mind you I called in sick uh, or I didn't call in sick I had to call off sick because my son was he had a respiratory infection it was uh it's called uh I'm drawing a blank right now I think it's cook or it started with like a C but it's it's like a little kid's version of uh bronchitis and, and like I couldn't stand here and him breathe like it sounded like he was struggling but he was always happy we well, took him to the hospital and stuff and everything checked out and he's fine now. But that's why I called off and then find out that he's like, oh, I'm going to grant people that work today guaranteed pay. I was like, any other time you wouldn't, you wouldn't care. You would just be like, just come back tomorrow. So their systems are still down. It's three, me three weeks, mind you. And, uh, I, I kept looking at my checks every week. I'm like, why am I getting any loads? And I've talked to other drivers because we all go to the same place and we all sit and wait and talk. We talk for like 15, 20 minutes with each other. Some of them saying like, they're doing some real, real shady stuff. Like giving certain people loads and leaving the other ones out to dry. I was like, yeah, I'm one of those people that are leaving out to dry. Like, I've been here for damn near two years, and they're giving people that worked here, you know, no offense to anybody that just started or has a CDL for only six months, but they're giving those people those loads. I was like, your guys are weaning out the people that's been here for two years. Either giving it to the old guys that's been here way longer or the people that just started. So that, that didn't rub me, uh, that rubbed me the wrong way, in my opinion. So I let him know, I was like, hey, yo, what's going on with the guarantee pay? I was like, I did everything you guys asked, and I'm still getting, get, uh, like, below damn near minimum wage. They're like, oh, you didn't send in your letter electronic trip confirmation I was like I can't control when I get that like how's that fair they're like oh well you gotta send us a message I was like you guys literally see on the Qualcomm when I finish the load as soon as I hit confirm finish trip on the uh, work the work uh, paper or the work uh, app you'll you automatically get notified that I finished it so we go start bickering back and forth and stuff like that. And I started getting smart. I was like, I told, I straight up told him, I was like, how the hell do you guys expect people to stay here if you guys keep playing with people's money? I was like, that is not how business should, should be ran. If you want to keep your employees to make money, you need to start making them happy. And he acted like he didn't care. I was like, you guys are supposed to be paying us for the days that we don't work because we're considered on call. That hasn't happened. I told him, I was like, I was like, uh, since I'm not getting no, no guaranteed pay for the little stuff, you know, you're supposed to be honoring paying us on days that you don't schedule, uh, pre plan us, right? And he says, no. 
or he didn't he didn't say no, he just didn't respond. I was like, yeah. So this last week I've been getting loads Monday through Friday. Cause he wants to make up for it. And I was like I was like any other person would go back and see all the days he had pre planned me and paid me that money, but it's whatever. So last month I checked my bank bank statement. I made twenty eight hundred dollars last month. Twenty eight hundred in an upcoming recession. That doesn't that doesn't even remotely feel good to say like twenty eight hundred dollars. Who the hell's gonna survive off that? That's like working at a damn that's like working, you know, at fast food or not even fast food, like you can be a grocery clerk. Like it don't make no sense. And that was that was just the one that just took the cake for me. There's many other stories like in the Midwest, like I don't know if anybody remembers in March, like the strength like back to back weekends, it was like terrible storms, like tornado like weather. He tried to dispatch me in that. He said I was coming from Des Moines, Iowa, coming back to Wright City, Missouri to pick up a load and then he wanted me to take that load. Like, as soon as my 10 hours was up and go to uh, Lexington, Kentucky. That was a six hour drive. I was like, my clock's gonna be out by the time I get back. And, he, and it was like on a Thursday or a Friday. I was like, I'm not doing that. Especially I'm not driving in no storm either. He gonna say, well, if you're, if you're not going to drive in it, then that's going to be considered a call-off and you won't get paid for it today. I was like, what? I was like, you guys have a policy if you don't feel safe, you don't have to drive. He's like, well, you're, you're calling off before the storm happens. I was like, oh, okay. And I, I let him I let him have it. I was like, I don't know how long you've been working here or whatever it's been, but that's not how you do things around here. Especially, you need to start talking to me with some, some, some respect. So I don't take that dis disrespectful shit. He didn't take kindly to that. I was like, if y'all gonna keep playing with my money and keep threatening threatening my life by making me try to uh, force dispatch on me and go to uh, go to uh, go through storms and stuff like that, I was like, I'm just gonna file a, a lawsuit against you guys. I'll, I'll take legal action. He didn't, he didn't respond after that. I had a whole nother person message me. I think it was like the HR or whatever. She's like, good morning. Sorry, we can't, uh, we can't um, provide your guaranteed pay. We have uh, rules and regulations. You know, the, the import people BS that nobody wants to hear. Like they just, they're reading off a script. So they don't say the wrong thing to, for the legal reasons. I was like, what are y'all trying to run around here? I was like, this was not like this last year. And a week later, I went to go check my mail. Got wrote up. Got wrote up for calling off. T calling off, not shutting down because I didn't feel safe, but calling off. They said I have six months to uh, to abide by company policy or I'll get terminated. I was like, okay. If I started looking for jobs, you, you know you know how difficult it is, like if you have experience looking for jobs, I'm like, everything sounds good, all, all you know, meat and potatoes, but what's really going on behind closed doors? Like, what, what what do these companies really do? So you gotta go through the reviews and all the one stars are all the same thing, like management's trash, all, all that crap. I'm like, God, it's gonna be the same thing going from Martin to another one. It's gonna be the same same outcome. 
And that's Martin's biggest demise is their management. Their management is, I rank it a one. Like, the females in the upper, upper office, they treat you way better than the, your driver managers and terminal managers. I was like, how, how are people that don't even have like a, you know, a position of power treating the drivers with more respect and dignity than, you know, the people are supposed to be professional. It don't make no sense. So, he knows, he knows I don't like him. I, I literally told him, I was like, listen, I don't like you, but what you're doing is, is really pissing me off and I'm gonna look for a new, new place. And that's what I did. I ended up quitting. And I'll let you guys know on the next video uh, what company I'm going to go to because who knows. I'm all packed up here now, but I don't want to jinx anything. This company parked in the same lot as me. And a guy, a uh, driver came up. He used to work for Martin, matter of fact. He was here for 18 months, he said. No, 16 months. No, it was 18. It doesn't make any difference. But he has like 30, 30 years of experience. And I was kind of skeptical because I was like, he's just, he's just one referral money. He's like one of the referral monkeys. But I didn't really put his name down. I'll, I'll wait till I get to uh, where, I, where I'm going. <laughs> Put his name down on a piece of paper and got his information. We talked for 15 minutes and mind you, it was hot. I remember that day. It was it was about doggone, what was it? It was about 85, 90 degrees, but all humid. Like it was, it was terrible. So I was, we were sitting there talking. He's like, yeah, Martin did the same thing to me. But with me, they they said, uh, if you don't like how things are run, ran here, uh, leave. And he said he demanded them to send that in an email, and he printed it off, and he still has it in case they're trying to come after him. I was like, man, you should have. I, I don't know. But long story short, like, Every attorney that I called, they literally said that they only they only help like the companies. They don't help the employees. That's how you know how much truck uh, trucking and the mega carriers got uh, attorneys wrapped around their fingers. And. For you guys, if you guys are like into the law and you know cases and stuff like that, go look up Martin's lawsuits. There's one that recently just got signed in April, or no, April or May. It was not. It's not too long ago. It was literally a month ago, a month and a half. And you got it was the same it's the same thing I'm going through. Read, read through that whole lawsuit. Luckily, the people that are filing it live in California, and I can't do anything about it because their laws are different from Missouri's laws. I didn't know this. Missouri's an at-will state. Most people that don't know what an at-will mean, uh, well, at-will means, or what it is, I can't talk today for some reason. It means they can fire you for any reason can't sue him. I'm like, what? I was like, man, that's some bullshit. But I was like, I was like, right, let me get up and get out of here because we're going to read into that and they're going to be like, oh, we can fire anybody from Missouri. They can't take us to court because they don't live in Wisconsin. I don't know if a Wisconsin's a at-will state or not. 
it is what it is. So the company I'm going to, I called, uh, I called the recruiter, or he called me. And we, we, he's a real friendly guy. Like we talked. I literally got put in their system. Got a rental car and getting transferred over to them within four days. Like <laughs> it was mad quick. It took four days because I took two days to think about it. I literally told them Monday. I was like, "Yeah, I'm going with you guys." And I was like, "I'll make Wednesday next week, my last day." They're like, "All right." We'll get you a rental car, rental car there at Martin Wednesday, and then uh, you drive a couple hours to us. And this company is based out about uh, based in Missouri, so it's a small company. Uh, I think they have less than three, five hundred trucks, something along those lines. They're not a mega carrier, thank God. But they run uh, OTR and Indum. Probably stick to OTR. They said if you live in I-70, you get home every week. And I was like, shit, I might do that. I hate when cops do that. This cop, like, pulled onto the shoulder and then almost tried to make a U-turn, but he's doing a speed trap. I'm like... Scared the hell out of me. But, anyways, thought everybody should know like, and all sunshine and rainbows. I'm not just like, like I said before in the beginning, I'm not trying to discourage anybody that's wanting to go to Martin. It's a great company. Um, you get what you ask for, and you gotta read between the lines. Because, depending on what manager you got, you can either get a real laid back manager that just gives pays you for everything like you're supposed to or you get that manager just wants to go by the book and that's what one that we got and four or five other employees said that they're going through the same thing and they're like let me know when you when you find another company so we can work together I was like bet so I tried to down a couple employees numbers I'll see out I'll, I'll try it out because I'm the person I'll try it out Fish out a review, see how it goes. If it goes good, and I'll shoot them a number. Like, referrals are nice, don't get me wrong, but I'm not trying to like money, I'm not trying to be a salesman, like, oh, come here, come here. I'm like, I'm not gonna try to ruin somebody's life like that. That's just, I have a very guilty conscience when it comes to stuff like that, knowing that it'll work for me but it might not work for anybody everybody else but uh if anybody has any questions about martin or any further details just drop them in the comment section below and uh get back to me because i'm always on youtube always that's all i do listen to documentaries and other stuff like that crime crime videos so, other than that, everybody have a blessed uh, rest of your week, and uh, I'll let you guys know in the next next one when and where I'm, I'll be. And uh, good luck on everybody's next endeavors. Peace out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace and love. See ya.